Hi everyone, I'm Dario Facchinetti. In this talk, I'm going to introduce you to ITYT, a novel way of implementing time-locked secrets based on smart contracts and threshold cryptography. Let me start by introducing the topic. So, many real-world scenarios require disclosing a secret at a specific future time. For instance, this happens when we vote for elections or when we dispose our inheritance by will. In these circumstances, we typically entrust a notary to keep the secret private until a future time, and then publish it so that we are no longer needed for disclosure to happen. But this, however, requires that we, as the owner of the secret, completely entrust a single third party. To completely remove the dependence on one or more trusted parties, time-released cryptography comes into play. The notary is replaced by a time lock, which is usually implemented by a cryptographic puzzle that binds the recovery of the secret to the solution of it. In this setting, a sending party, the secret's owner, can encrypt the secret so that the receiving party is required to perform multiple decryptions to recover, to recover it. And given the assumption that each decryption round takes approximately the same amount of time, and that the number of rounds can be tuned by the sender during the encryption process, it is possible to protect the secret for arbitrarily long periods of time. So, cryptographic puzzles avoid the need for a trusted party, yet two aspects make them impractical. The first one is that the sending party has to make assumption on future computing power, and this is far from trivial. The second is that the receiving party has to run the decryption procedure for a long time, which poses a question about economic incentives. As we wanted to provide an alternative to time locks, we started considering which technology we could use. One of the reasons that led to the creation of puzzles was the need to model time. A blockchain intrinsically defines the concept of time, and can also be used to persistently disclose secrets, as it is designed to resist the modification of its data. Yet, it lacks any mechanism to keep information confidential. There are some recent proposals that address this problem by splitting information among many users, who have to cooperate to recover the secret information using a predefined protocol. The protocol can be programmed as a smart contract, which permits to verify its outcome and detect any misbehavior. The security no longer follows from a single trust assumption, but from the behavior of the users that take part to the protocol. If they cooperate as intended, the outcome of the protocol will be successful, the secret will be recovered, and the time lock function achieved as a consequence. To ensure the user cooperate as intended, we can set economic incentives and penalties. By doing so, the, out the outcome of the protocol can be determined based on participants' expected utility, under the rationality assumption. With our proposal, we aim to provide a generic framework to implement time locks using smart contracts. In the following, we are going to present the protocol from a high-level perspective, discuss the economic model characterizing the protocol, and finally, demonstrate how it can be implemented using smart contracts and multi-party computation. So, from a high-level perspective, the protocol is straightforward. We have an owner of the secret and then shareholders. Each of them is issued with a wallet. We also have a contract which can store currency. The owner wants to disclose the secret at a future time, and to get this service, he pays to the contract a fee, FO, the disclosure of the secret is delegated to the shareholders. Each shareholder pays to the contract a bid, BH, to get his share, and is rewarded with the reward RH, in case the protocol ends successfully. The protocol is successful only if the secret is revealed after disclosure time. Since we are using Shamir secret sharing for the generation of the shares, this means that at least k shares needs to be submitted to the contract after disclosure time. The protocol also supports the role of whistleblower, or rather someone that reports a user misbehavior in return for payment. If either a share or, or the secrets are reported to the contract before disclosure time, a bonus, 
WH in case of the share, WS in case of, of the secret, is immediately paid to the whistleblower. If the protocol fails due to the submission of multiple shares or the secret, all the shareholders lose their bids and the remaining smart contract funds are destroyed. As said before, in this setting we model each participant as rational, or rather someone that subverts the protocol only if it's economically convenient. The economic value V represents the interest associated to the secret. Its usage permits to analyze the behavior of the parties involved in the protocol, under the assumptions that each one wants to maximize his rewards, we develop a set of constraints to push rational actors to strictly adhere to the protocol, hence achieving the desired time lock function. Here you can see the single user constraints that are used to promote share and secret whistleblow and also guarantee that the shareholders have a payoff. But we also have to consider that the parties may forge alliances. We then introduce them a generic coalition of users that team up to recover the secret ahead of disclosure time. To ensure that them doesn't break the time lock, we set the maximum payoff achievable by monetizing the secret to be lower than the total cost spent to get K shares. At the same time, when disclosure time expires, we need to add a constraint to avoid M to lead the time lock to a stall, refusing to submit its share, waiting for a buy of the secret. This is done adding the third constraint. This is still not enough, as uh, a coalition could maximize its, pro its payoff by submitting uh, to the contract some of the shares before breaking the time lock. Therefore, we have to take into account the extra revenue WER that can be gained by M submitting to the contract an optimal number of shares. The extra revenue modifies inequality too, and in order to compute it, we need to determine the optimal number uh, of the shares, JO, to be submitted to the contract. There are two cases, case A, when there are multiple coalitions that are able to recover the secret, and case B, where independently from the ratio between the economic amounts, there is only one coalition holding at least K shares. There are also some additional requirements uh, that uh, have to be met to consider an instance of the protocol well formed. First, the fee paid by the owner has to be enough to remunerate all the shareholders in case of success. Second, the smart contract has to have enough currency to pay the whistleblower bonuses in case of failure. Please refer to the paper for all the details and have a look in the repository where we provide a Z-free script to solve the model. Now, I leave the spot to Matthew for the presentation of our implementation. Thanks, Dario. We designed ETYT as a finite state machine within an Ethereum smart contract, in which each smart contact, contract function matches an action available to the users. As you can see from the top of the figure, the state machine is divided into five macro phases. Setup, in which the owner has to deploy the contract and the shareholders to subscribe to it. Share generation, that involves off-chain operations to confidentially split the secret. These are operations that aren't directly performed by the smart contract functions, and we are going to describe them in a moment. Then we have activation, in which the shareholders attest they have received their share and give their go-ahead. We have lock, in which the shareholders keep the shares confidential until the disclosure time. And finally, there is termination, where the secret is disclosed. Please notice that the secret is written to the contract only after the TYT instance is locked. We do that by using a random key instead of the secret during the share generation primitive. From the shareholder's per perspective, there is no difference as rewards and penalties are now associated with the management of the key. But from the owner's one, it avoids the exp exposure of the secret until the economic penalties have been activated. Now, in this last part of the presentation, we would like to discuss the share generation primitive. The reason why we use multi-party computation is very simple. Since shares are associated to reward and penalties, 
we need to avoid any single point of trust. In the multi-party computation setting, each party joins the protocol as a network host. So each ETYT user is provided with a virtual machine containing an application able to communicate via network following a predefined protocol. To execute the share generation primitive, the owner and the shareholders start the MPC application. The owner inputs a random 128-bit key together with the total number of shareholders n and the reconstruction threshold k. Each shareholder instead submits a random 128-bit seed. The key, as well as our k-1 seeds, are used as the coefficient of the Shamir secret sharing polynomial. Subsequently, using the owner method, n xy coordinates, which represent the shares, are computed. Commitments are then produced using MIMC, a cryptographic primitive distinguished for its low multiplicative complexity. Finally, a dedicated output is open to the other parties. The owner gets the commitment of all the shares generated, while each shareholder gets his share. The commitment of the key along with n and k. We refer to this share generation primitive as single phase. As it is illustrated in the top of the figure, strictly adhering to the single phase version leads to a sudden performance degradation when the number of shareholders increases. We therefore implemented a two-phase version of the algorithm, which is composed by two MPC protocols. In the first step, which is jointly executed between the owner and the N shareholders, the Shamir polynomial and the shares are computed. While in the second step, which is executed one-to-one -one between the owner and each shareholder, the commitments are produced. The difference between the single phase and the two-phase MPC lies in the evolution of the MIMC primitive. Unlike the single phase version, the two phase solution separates the generation of the shares from the computation of the commitments. It follows that the first step can be carried out even in scenarios with several participants, as it is not computationally intensive. Whereas the second step, which is instead is computationally intensive, is always performed among two users. Here we illustrate how the memory consumption for each participant of the two-phase share generation changes according to an increase in the degree of uh, the policy polynomial. As you can see, we go from roughly 0.6 gigs of RAM to approximately 2.4. We point out that the MPC application was implemented using fre the Fresco efficient and secure computation framework, and all the tests were performed on a dual Xeon E5 server, running Ubuntu 20.04. Please refer to the paper for further details. To conclude, our work is publicly available on GitHub. You can find in the repository the implementation of the smart contract programmed in Solidity, a Python script leveraging Z3 to solve the economic model presented, and the Java implementation of the MPC application leveraging Fresco. These are also our contacts. Any questions are welcome. Thank you.